Hello. If you have tried to use the default Power BI waterfall chart to recreate your PowerPoint variance bridge, but got frustrated because you were not able to show from and to values along with your variances, then you're in luck, as in this video I will show you how you can build any variance bridge in Power BI and make it look the way you would expect it to. What do I mean by the way you would expect it to? Well, let's take a look at this um, waterfall chart here. Uh, this is a pretty standard chart you probably have seen many times before in your PowerPoints where you're saying that I'm going to show my revenue for last year, end up at revenue for this year, and show all of the buckets in between of what has changed from this year to last year to bridge that gap. Uh, so these waterfall charts are very useful to show variances uh, for gross margin revenues, uh, currencies, all kinds of things. And unfortunately, building a chart like this uh, without making some extra work is almost impossible in Power BI. So here we see a variance between 53 and $41 million. So we're looking at roughly $12, $13 million of variance, and it's broken down by all of these buckets. Uh, the default Power BI behavior is the following. So here we're looking at the default waterfall chart from Power BI. As we said, the variance was roughly about 12, 13 million dollars. So here we go in a total. We're walking that variance across the same buckets, price, value, and mix. So we lost some money relative to last year due to price fluctuations. Uh, the volume allowed us to pick up more revenue and then mix uh, also was negative. However, by default, we're not seeing in Power BI where did we begin and where did we end up. So um, in this video, I will show you how to, how to do that uh, with a little bit of work. So I'm going to jump into our Power BI desktop and uh, we're going to try to figure out how to make this thing work. So let's take a look what I had to do to um, make the V1 of the waterfall chart work. Basically what I did was I created a, um, a table and in the table I created all of the buckets of my walk, price, value, and mix. Then I added that table into the category option for our field. I added the variable or the measure that does the breakdown of the price value mix variance into the values portion of the, of the chart. And I got the default uh, waterfall chart in Power BI. So just to make it easier for you to understand what I'm talking about. So here's our Power uh, PVM table, the category table, and these are the walks I have come up some other options um, in this table, but for this particular chart, I just want to show the three price value mix. So these are my categories, and I also added a, an order column so that I can specify in which order I would like those buckets to appear. Let's take a look at the variable or the measure I had to build to make that chart work. So basically what I did was I calculate what the each bucket value should be. Uh, we can ignore what the specific logic is. You could look into my price value mix videos on this channel to, to see what the logic is in this particular case. But basically we're saying is for price, show the price bucket, for volume, show the volume impact, and for mix, show the mix impact. And as you can see, um, because of this approach, we're now able to see the chart um, the way it is showing it by default. So price, value, mix, total. So this is our 12.4 million. Now let's take a look at the fixed chart. So in the fixed chart, we have last year, 41 million, actual 53 million, and all of the buckets. Uh, you're probably a little bit confused right now because how is it 41 million less than 15 million? Well, what I'm doing here is uh, there is um, an interesting option for this chart. So if you go to Y axis, uh, by default it starts at auto, which means that it's only going to show the relevant portion of the, of the data. If you say, if you specify that you want to start at zero, then this will look probably closer to what you would expect. It'll show the bar that's proportioned to 41 million and all of the components of the charts are going to be proportioned. So if you delete the zero, then the from and two buckets are going to be um, truncated so that we can highlight uh, what's happening in between. So I'm going to go ahead and put a zero for now, just so that uh, you guys are not confused as to what's going on in the chart. 
So now let's take a look at what had to change for this chart to, wait, to work the way we would expect it to. So several things happen. You could see that uh, my PVM, the categories, the buckets that I'm doing the walk by, uh, instead of being in category, I moved them into the breakdown portion of the chart setup. And I've also added another uh, field into my category. So this thing called walk start. So what is this walk start? Or I probably should have just called it walk. So I've created a table uh, that's called walk. And uh, in a walk, we will specify the start and end values for your bridge. So in my case, I want the bridge to stay to, st to start with ly last year, and then to end with actual. So therefore, in a table, I'm doing the same very thing. I say I start with ly and give it a walk sort one, and I end with actual and give it a walk sort two. So here I go ly and actual one and two. So these things go into the category, and then um, the buckets that I would like to do my walk by go into the breakdown. So ly actual is walk value mix price is the uh, PVM. So again, just so you guys understand, PVM looks like this. Ignore the bottom two. I don't want to see them in this particular chart. And then the walk looks like this. So you need to create those two tables. And I just use enter data feature of Power BI, where I go in, uh, type those values in real quick. And I have now all of the pieces to set up my chart in terms of category and breakdown. So that will give me all of the things at the bottom to go from and to and all of the pieces in between. Now what I need to do is I need to change my default revenue measure uh, in such a way that it respects this new structure. So let's take a look at the measure itself. So you will see that uh, there's a couple of things I've changed to make sure that it works with the structure. So again, at the top, I calculate the values for each of the buckets. And the real magic happens here in this line of code. By the way, what I will do is I will post all of this code in my blog. And uh, I will post the link to the blog in the video description. So if you look in, so there should be a video link to the blog and in the blog, you will be able to see um, the 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 decks for those commands. So um, effectively, what you need to do is you will have to replicate this code. So uh, one and two pieces. So basically, you're saying that um, so one is you start so this is ly. And in this portion here is where you demonstrate where you return uh, the breakdown now by, by category. The only thing you have to do is you have to take these values where before I used them as they were. Uh, now in this in this modified layout, I have to multiply them by minus one. So uh, I'm gonna so the way return st statement works is I say, okay, um, while we're in LY in the beginning, so if we have for every value in the walk, I'm going to return the minus one times what that value should be. And then um, when there is no match for the category, I'm going to return the variable that returns the beginning of the chart. So LY revenue last year. And this is what you have to do to make this the thing work, uh, you have to return zero. So basically, you can cut and paste. And then when there is no match, you return revenue. So you return the actual value the where you want to end with. And then in between you return zeros. So the way the default Power BI chart works is, um, it's going to use this to paint the bar number one, then it's going to paint number two, number three, number four, and then the last one will be where we want to end up with. So uh, let's take a look what I mean by that. So this will be the bar number one, bar number two, bar number three, bar number four, bar number five. So let's look at this again. 
this will be bar number one, bar number two, bar number three, bar number four, and this will be the bar at the very end. Um, it's probably hard to follow and hard to understand. However, in order to make this work, really all you need to do is create those two table, the category table, I called it PVM. So these are the, um, the steps in the bridge. And then you have a walk table that has the two values for start and end. And then this will be the start, this will be the end, and just make sure to multiply by minus one for all of the buckets that you had before. And then make sure you specify zero for all the buckets in the second portion of the if statement. And now I'm back into my original report. Uh, I can slice and dice my variances by clicking at uh, in my matrix and I could see how my uh, two bridges refresh. Uh, the top one is for revenue, the bottom one is for margin. So in the top one, I'm bridging last year to actual using price value mix. In the bottom, I'm bridging last year margin to actual margin using price value mix. And um, if you're in finance, you probably appreciate having that start value and end value in your waterfall charts. Again, I will post the relevant DAX code in my blog. Hope you found this video informative and please come back again for more video in the future. Bye.